everyone and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review. I'm Callie and today up on the tabletop we have Sagrada by Floodgate Games. Sagrada is a dice drafting and window crafting game for one to four players up to six with the expansion. It takes about 35 to 45 minutes to play and is recommended for ages 13 and up. Let's see what Sagrada looks like on the table. Here is everything you get in Sagrada with the base game and the expansion. So we have our player boards here and the base game you'll get four of these and every player will get one of these to build their stained glass window. We have a bunch of cards. So we have cards that go in the stained glass window. You can see here the window pattern cards that sort of give you the map for what you're going for in your window. And there's a bunch of different kinds. And the pips on the bottom represent difficulty level as well as how many of these favor tokens you're going to get. There are objective cards here. So there are secret objective cards. And, uh, oh, these are the regular, regular objective cards and secret objective cards here, which you'll be using to gain points. There are also tool cards here, which you'll be using, everyone will be using throughout the game to try to uh, get as many points. We have a score tracker and a round tracker here. We have a couple of uh, dice trays, just rolling the dice. And this it comes in the expansion, a different way to draft the dice uh, individually. It just goes on the player board like that. A little extra content there. You get a lot of dice too. You get 90 dice in the base game and even more in the expansion. You can see they have five different colors, different pips on them, and they fit right into the player boards. So this is everything that you get in the game and we'll walk through a little bit of how to play. Sagrada is a dice drafting and tableau building game. So once you have your player board set up, with your window pattern, you have your secret objective card, there's objective cards and tools on the field, then you're going to be rolling die and creating a pool that everyone's going to draw from in order to try to fill up their window frame. There's also certain rules you have to follow, not just the rules of, okay, I can only put a six here, but also I can't put the same number right next to it or the same color. So as you get going, it gets very complicated. You have less chances to fill your board and it becomes a little bit of a game of probability and strategy. Uh, let's see how it looks in a turn. Here the game is set up for two players. We have our two player boards in here with the window pattern panes in. Uh, each player also has their secret objective card, which they aren't showing to anyone. This player has a purple, shades of purple objective card. So some of the values on their purple dice are going to give them points at the end. And over here, it's the same thing, but a green one. So points on the green dice are going to give them points at the end. In the middle here, we have uh, objective cards that everyone can use. So uh, here's pairs of five and six. If you have pairs of five and six dice on your board, you get two points each. Row color variety for each row that you have totally different colors in, you're going to get six points each, and column shade variety. So these are the numbers. So columns with different, all different numbers, no value repeated, gonna give you four points each for each column. Down here as well, we have tool cards, which anyone can use. And these you'll be using, use, you'll use with your favor tokens, placing your token there on your turn in order to use whatever the tool says. The first time it costs one, the second time for any player it costs two. You can use them as often as you have favor tokens to do so. Down here we have the round tracker that will just keep track of how many rounds are left in the game. Here we have our little dice tray. So to start off, the first player will grab, for two players, we're going to grab five dice and just roll them here in the dice tray. Nice way to keep them handy and stable and for everyone to see. And we'll take turns drafting the dice. So there are certain rules for how you draft the dice. You gotta start at the edge. And of course, if you wanna put a yellow one here, um, it has to be yellow right there. But maybe I don't wanna do that because there needs to be a two there. So I would definitely not do that. I couldn't use, I wouldn't wanna use either of the yellows there actually because the six here, I don't 
uh, can have the same color or the same number next to each other up down left right but I could start over here with the red and get a good uh, that's a different color here okay nope I can't do that one <laughs> maybe do this one then it requires a little bit of thinking here the next player will choose one same thing starting on one of the outer edges and then you're going to be building out from there now when you take the second one you can place it next to your first dice or diagonally but remember you got to follow all the rules so here actually this one is somewhat good one um, except for the we're not going to get the color row variety there and then over here I don't want to put the six there maybe the three is a better option because three can go there red can go there uh, great the last dice goes onto the round tracker here first round is over next player draws five dice and you just continue on until you get to the 10th round and hopefully you have your board full of dice just a note as you are drafting your dice the turn order is going to go the first player will go first all the way around the room to the last player last player player will pick two dice and then the turn order will go back around to the first player so the first player you do get that first die pick but you also have to choose between only two dice at the end of the round and the end of the game for the score tracking you're gonna use this handy dandy score tracker with your little colored uh, die mark you get to just put, put your die mark on whatever score you get you get higher than 50 you can go flip it on over and then keep going and hopefully you get a really high score so to the review of this game Sagrada I like it a lot is uh, definitely one of my top favorite games right now. There's just so much strategy and fun involved. I love the everything, the comp how the components and the theme and the art all work together really well. The dice, picking them up, the kind of see-through and glass, and it works at your building, your tableau. Uh, it all really works together using tools to try to fix things, <laughs> working uh, competitively a bit. You don't have to play this game super competitively, but because you are pulling from the same draft pool, you're even inadvertently going to be a little competitive. Sorry to Michael <laughs> for that, but it definitely happens. The comp replayability for this game is great because there are so many of these window pane cards. Uh, we got a few of the extra of these in the expansion and a couple of promo ones as well at different events. Uh, and they're also double-sided, so even more opportunities to play. And you'll notice uh, the pips at the bottom, so this is a really difficult one. You can see it has a lot of, of uh, things you have to meet as far as the numbers on the dice. This could be very difficult, but you get a lot of the favor tokens to utilize the tools. So great to have maybe the newer players play with less pips ones, uh, three, and have players who are more advanced, have played the game before, can do a little bit more challenging cards. That kind of layer levels the playing field for everyone, and you can play with all different ages. I think 13 plus is a good start, but I'd say even maybe a little bit younger players could play this game if they have the attention span and uh, you have a great group, great family, love playing strategy games like this with. In addition, uh, there are a lot of different cards for the objective cards. So these are the secret ones here. And you also have the not secret ones that everyone uses. And so this really adds to the replayability too, because you're gonna get three of these. There's gonna be different scoring things that you're going after some things are going to give you more points than others they may be a little bit more difficult but you as a player get to choose okay do i want to go after this or that at the beginning of the game you get a lot more choice and then as the game goes down it gets a little more difficult you're just trying to fit everything into your board but what's great about this game is every time you play you get better because you realize stuff you could have done differently it has a very great informative feedback in that way and helping yourself become a better player each time which I really like really enjoy that the art is beautiful the theme is great the components are really cool especially how you know you kind of have the 
the cut in the cardboard here where you set your dice into it. I really like that. It just feels like I'm building something when I'm setting the dice down and how the cards kind of slide in and out, but they stay there, which is great. Uh, very, you know, durable pieces here that you can play with a lot. So I hope you uh, enjoyed my review of Sagrada. I hope you check it out. We have the base game and the expansion for five to six players that is available on Amazon and on Bloodgate Games. This is Callie Wright from Unfiltered Gamer. Thank you for watching and as always I look forward to seeing you next time.